you know, I would normally open this up by saying, you know, Ernie and them was bad as hell when they was little kids, but then I, had to, I can't lie like that because I know we was bad too, y'all. We was bad and we didn't even have social media to catch us. <laughs> I'm Sharana from Pay Your Weights, and today I'm going to be reviewing Atlanta um, Season 2, Episode 10, FUBU. Everybody used to rock that FUBU back in the day, y'all. And so the episode opens up with Ern. He is shopping with his mom, and basically, you know, he's losing his mind. Everybody used to hate going shopping with their mother. I personally used to go sleep under the little clothing racks until she was ready to go because I just didn't have time. I was always tired. She always had to drag me out of the house when I just wanted to lay down. And so I just made my own peace with it, and I would just go to sleep and hide out until she came looking for me. So... Ern is with his mother, okay? He's going to get all the stuff his mama asked him for. Then all of a sudden, lo and behold, he sees this shirt, this beautiful yellow FUBU jersey, okay, y'all? And so it was even on clearance, okay? So you didn't even have to finesse your mom that much because you was saving her money. And so he go up to his mom, like, Mom, can I have this? She was like, yeah, don't ever say I didn't do nothing for you. And I was just like, why does everyone's mother say that? Like, I made you bring me into this world. Like, you're not supposed to be clothing me and feeding me. I just, I don't understand the logic with parents and that. But she buys him the shirt. He was geek, y'all. He was super geek. You know how you geek to go to school the next day because you know you finna stunt on them. You finna stunt on everybody that you wake up before your alarm clock goes off because you're just so excited that you can't even go to sleep. And that's how Ern was. He said, I got my FUBU jersey. I'm finna stunt on these hoes at school real quick. And so he was up at Adam and ready to go. He got on the bus and then, you know, he chilling on the bus and all of a sudden this kid throws him out of the bus and then it hits this other dude. And he was like, who did that? And then the kid snitched on him. This Random little kid snitch, you know snitches get stitches, and he knocked that kid the hell out. Okay, so we already know that these kids mean business, and these kids they doing whatever. And this, we've all been through this. We all knew how to behave on the bus. We knew what bullies to avoid. And it's just typical school, right? So. They get into class. Everybody was like, yo, Ern, I like your jersey, Ern. I like that FUBU. He got that new FUBU. He had the girls looking at him, the dudes hyping him up, gassing him up. And then all of a sudden, somebody else popped up in the classroom with the same jersey on. But there's differences. Somebody has one stripe. Another person has two stripes. Somebody got a little emblem up here. So I'm just like, yo, who jersey is a fake? And we know it's Ern, y'all. You ain't gonna find no FUBU jersey that's 50% off up at this department store. So, the whole time I was like, it ain't me, it ain't me. But there's like, you know what, it's a kid that's coming to school. He ain't here today, but we gonna figure out whose jersey is not real. So, they going through class and all of that. And so Ern is bugging out because he feels like his, he thinks it's real. I don't know if he really thought it was real or he just knew it was fake. I don't know, y'all. But the other kid, he's like, yo, my stuff is not fake. And so... The whole episode was going back and forth with both uh, the other dude getting bullied um, by the people. And he's like, yo, my dad bought this. And, you know, he has like a young dad and dad always buying fly stuff. And he's trying to explain this to them. But they weren't having this. So they was making fun of him. They were bullying him. And then, you know, there's a scene where Ern is like in the classroom. He got this little crush, this little girl. And so he, they slide a note. You know, they used to slide notes back in the day. He was like, do you like, I think her name was Erica. Do you like Erica? Check yes or check no. And so he checked yes, slid it back. Then, you know, they still in another note like, yo, is your shirt, is your shirt real or is it fake? And then he was like, it's real, yes. And then they was like, are you sure? Because Erica can't be walking around with no broke uh, niggas. And I was like, yo, little kids talking like this back in the day. I don't, I don't, we didn't work. We didn't use the N word and stuff like that. So I don't know, maybe I can't recall saying that. And I was just like, I died laughing at it, but I was just like, these kids are too much. And so we see that Ern is smart. We already know that he has like a brilliant mind. He's a very smart kid. He's just not as popular as everyone else. And so we see Al, so we see that him and Al went to the same school and we see that Al is in the principal's office because this fool then stole this kid's TI-83 calculator. Everybody knew about them TI-83 calculators. My mama said, you're not, <coughs> you're not good at math anyway, so I can't go ahead and get you a calculator. You just gonna have to use a regular calculator until you pull your math grade up and you prove to me that you deserve for me to, to roll all these coins 
hands on this calculator. So this fool Al then stole his kid calculator. Not only did he steal his calculator, he had the audacity, the nerve to sell this kid his calculator back with his name engraved. And then I'm trying to sit here and be mad at Al, but then I'm just like, why y'all dumb behind go buy your calculator back that obviously has your name engraved in it? So he's in the office, the principal let him go, like, Al, just get out of my face and don't do nothing else. And so we see that Ern trying to talk to Al, like, hey, man, they, like, trying to climb in by my uh, jersey. He's like, yo, man, that jersey fake. He was like, just walk, just be confident, and they ain't going to mess with you. So the whole day, Ern just sweating bullets out. He's sweating, sweating bullets, trying to avoid everybody telling them this uh, jersey fake. The one kid who they said wasn't going to be there, he actually showed up, and he was making fun of the other kid that Ern saw that. And so he just even more spooked y'all. I ain't never seen no kid ready to go before the bell rang. Ern was like, he had that jump start, like he was going out for track, like they was about to blow the buzzer and he was going to zoom. So he got his stuff, trying to zoom out. Kids find him, grab him, pull him up. Both of them going back and forth. Then this dude talking about, nah, Ernst is Ernst ain't real because it said made in Bangladesh and the other dude say made in China. And I was like, but I thought when they said made in China that those are the fake ones. But I mean, we know Ernst is fake. We already saw that he had like a little string hanging down and then they pulled it in the tour. So we already know that Ernst is fake. And so... Al come and save the day. Like, he stays saving Earn and basically tells them, hey, man, like, his is real. Other dudes is fake. And so, basically, they start clowning old dude. Earn gets away. He goes back on the bus, and he's looking out from the bus, seeing that the other young boy, he's being bullied. And basically, you know, he goes about his day. He leaves. He goes home. And so, they come back to school the next day, and they see that, the young boy who was being bullied, who they said that his, his jersey was fake, that he commits suicide. And I was like, wow, I wasn't expecting them to do that. And I kind of sat back and thought that when we were in grade school, like I, I went to a predominantly like black grade school, like in the beginning. And then I kind of switched over into Catholic school towards like fourth through, actually fourth all the way through to college. I went to like a Jesuit university and everything. And so I never heard of kids committing suicide until I kind of went to like a mixed school, but definitely never heard of anyone committing suicide in grade school and so the fact that they did that and then when the teacher tells them like hey you just never know what people are going through and I really want you guys to understand that your words can hurt people and did anyone else find it ironic that there was a girl in their classroom who was kind of like in a bad mood she had her head down on the desk and the lady was like hey we talked about this in these meetings that you aren't gonna be like this anymore and then the day that they find out that the kid died she doesn't hear the announcement so we don't know if she knows but she comes back to school super happy energetic volunteering to like read in class and everything and so I don't know if that was in correlation to the kid's death or just kind of piggybacking off what she's saying you do not know what is happening to people when they're at home and I know for me like that was life you went to school if you was wearing something crazy they jones you you dealt with whatever that that's just what you did and especially now that we're living in a social media age that bullying is taking up like a hundred times notches and because not only are they joining you at school but people can make memes about you they can make videos about you when you get beat up in school it ain't word of mouth it's on video people are posting this on website so like the whole world can see it and so i really like that they shed light on bullying especially with young children because things that we might think are innocent you just never know what's happening to somebody at home and even as adults you just never know what somebody's going through so i really love that they touched um, onto that, but especially to show us the relationship that Ern and Al had, even as kids. And I really want to know kind of what happened to really stop like their closeness. Cause you can see that their moms was close. And I don't know if something happened. Like once um, his mom died, did they just stop talking to him? I don't know, but I really want to see how do we go from being this close to when the series started, they weren't even talking. Like he was just his cousin and he hadn't spoken to him. He was just trying to get him to be his manager. And so I think this was a great episode to kind of, I don't know if this should have followed up with from Al firing him in the last episode or if they should have showed this like closer, like in earlier in the season, but it was nice to see what their dynamic was. And I'm interested to see what their dynamic is going to be now that Al has fired Ern from being his manager. So as always, my name is Sharana from Pay Your Weight, and these are my thoughts on um, episode 10, FUBU, Atlanta season two. As always, can you please do me a favor? Please hit the like button, hit subscribe, share this video with your friends, and I will see you soon.